The project Chris has come to discuss with Rambaxi has a highly unusual 30-year history. It dates back to work done in China in the 1970s when an extremely potent anti-malarial was discovered. It was an old Chinese plant-based medicine, artemisinin. In the late 1990s, Roche, the Swiss drug company, and a number of research institutes, including the University of Nebraska, began to develop a synthetic form of artemisinin. Last year, Medicines for Malaria negotiated a handover of the research to Rambaxi. The thing about the stage we're getting into now is that we've moved from, as it were, the lab phase of discovery and development to the phase where we're trying to turn it into a real industrial process. We're trying to scale it up from sort of test tubes to much larger quantities of drugs being made. And that is a very, very key stage. If we can't do that successfully, then the drug may fail. At Rambaxi, Chris meets Dr. Rashmi Babaya to monitor progress. It is here that they test the purity of the drug and where the challenges of the scaling up process are tackled. I think the, the key challenge is it's a very complex molecule. And with that kind of complexity in the molecule, uh, the key challenges are synthesizing, making it in a cost-effective manner so that ultimate drug will be cheaper. Second key challenge is to synthesize or to make enough quantity of material for preclinical and clinical development. The future of this uh, project hinges on this particular first step because if we don't succeed, no other uh, development can take place and it will be a showstopper. Artemisinin is an effective and fast-acting anti-malarial. The trouble is that it is also extremely expensive. Whereas chloroquine costs less than 10 cents per treatment, artemisinin costs up to 30 times more, between one and a half and three dollars a time. As a natural product, the manufacturing process is very costly. Only one percent of the plant can be used, the rest goes to waste. This means that it cannot be made at a price affordable to the millions of rural poor that need it most. Chris believes the answer is to make a synthetic compound that works just like artemisinin. It will be just as powerful, and it will also be affordable. So this is the structure of artemisinin, which is a very powerful uh, anti-malarial drug. And because it is derived from plant, it is very expensive. This is the most important part of that molecule, that's peroxide, and in the synthetic molecule, we are also going to have a structure that is similar and it will look like this. What it means is, if we succeed, we will have a compound that is structurally very similar to artemisinin, but will be a lot cheaper and what that means is we will have a major new antimalarial that will be afford that can be affordable to millions of people around the world. It is 40 years since the island of Zanzibar gained its independence from Oman and the people are celebrating. Rama Abdallah Mazaro is a clinician and is here representing her hospital. She's proud to do so. This year will be the first time she's been able to give patients drugs made from artemisinin. It's made a huge difference. Out of the 42 African nations that suffer from endemic malaria, only six have moved on to using artemisinin-based therapies. And Zanzibar is one of them. The new drugs have a 95% success rate, but each adult dose amounts to about $3, prohibitively expensive for poor countries. The Global Fund, a partnership between governments and the public and private sectors, is subsidizing the drug in Zanzibar for three years at a cost of $2 million. Rama and the scores of patients who turn up every day to see her belong to a lucky minority. My name is Rahma Abdullah Maisara. I am one.